Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 494, for comics originally releasing January the 6th, 2000, nope. and, or sorry, February the 6th. Yep. Oh, off by a month already. Yeah. <laughs> We've only just begun 2019. I'm already yeah. heading back to the beginning of the year. But before we get into what's coming out in your local comic book shops this coming Wednesday, Drew, you and I love to jump into the FOC, check out the final order cutoff, and see what we may have missed within previews. And of course, we get a specially curated FOC list from Cowabunga. Um, it's, of course, our last chance to look at books we may have missed in previews, the things that we uh, either maybe changed our mind on, but this is our last chance to order them and make sure we get them on the day they released so we do not have to chase books uh, into the secondary market on the Ebays and such. Um, sometimes we get FOC exclusives. There's all kinds of really cool stuff on the FOC. And Eric also highlights a few books for us. This week he's highlighted Batgirl 32, the variant. We've got a Derek Chu cover. We that also is nice. have, yeah, we have from Dark Horse Comics a folded metal Sword Daughters hardcover volume 2. A Ben Oliver cover on that. I'm not familiar with too much with the Sword Daughter. Oh, it's the hardcover. Oh, so it's okay. So yeah, it's twenty like, bucks for a hardcover. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, we have Die 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 number eight. Of course, the Robert Kirkman, Chris Burnham comic, and they are not even letting us see the cover on that one yet. And oh. Life is Strange, number four. Uh, Claudia Leonardi cover A. Those yeah, are just a few of the things that uh, Eric likes to preview for us as well. Still the only way you can get Die, Die, Die. FOC. Don't still understand FOC. it. A very peculiar way of doing things, but uh, Kirkman does what Kirkman does, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it keeps the print count down. Yeah. All right, Drew, you want to jump into the FOC and start at the very top? Start in Dark Horse and see what you and I can find in there. Well, uh, you know, I'm I'm enjoying Black Hammer. Uh, there is a Sienkiewicz B cover for Black Hammer 8, which is really nice. A really nice Sienkiewicz cover. Um, and I'll probably jump in on that because um, I got a problem with Sienkiewicz covers. I don't know why I keep, I mean... I did. I went. What I do? Twelve sets of the Walking Dead Sinkeviches, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been bouncing back and forth on uh, every other time that it that it's out. So, I, yeah, I got a problem, but it's a really pretty cover. So, I'm gonna do it. Very cool. Uh, the second issue of Fight Club Three will be out by then. Um, we haven't had the first one yet, have we? Uh, not a, I don't think it's, and I don't, it might have just came out. I was going to say, it may yeah. have just hit, or if not, uh. Yeah, it might have hit Wednesday. Coming out real soon. I know I haven't read it yet. And word number two, or we, wired, do we determine how you pronounce that? <laughs> I was saying weird, but I don't know if that's correct. Yeah. It's it's got some interesting covers too, style to it. Antonio Fuso on the cover A, and uh, Albuquerque on the cover B. <coughs> Raphael Albuquerque. Yeah, very cool. Raphael Albuquerque B cover there. Yeah. So um, yeah, pretty nice look, stylized look. I, I I still haven't read the first issue there, so I don't know, you know, what to expect. That's yeah, it for me in Dark Horse. I was going to say, that's all for Dark Horse for me. We've got quite a few collected editions and things. Some uh, uh, interesting things that Dark Horse always likes to put out. A lot of collected editions, a lot of things that... Uh, art books, essentially, and things. But as far as actual comics, that's all I've got in Dark Horse. And Let's head to DC, where there's all kinds of cool stuff in DC on this one. What do we think of this Jeff DeCal uh, B cover for Action 1008? Um is he aping uh, painted style of like a Ross or a art germ? Or do you think he's, he's got some talent? I think he's got a little bit of talent. It doesn't look as painted style as like a, a Ross necessarily, but 
There are definitely some neat stylistics to it. I like it with the uh, black background and the cover and the kind of space. It's a cool looking B cover. Is that a name you recognize? Like you've seen it before? Uh, it seemed new to me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's pretty new to me as well. I, I, don't, I don't recognize him. Okay. That, again, that Batgirl 32. Um, that's Derek Chu. Uh, I like that as well. I think he's got some talent. Yeah, I can see a lot of people popping up and chasing these Chu covers. Yeah. Um, we get the pen ultimate detective nine ninety nine before one thousand. Oh yeah, uh, is that, is, so, I don't think that's how you use pen ultimate. <laughs> no, is that, is that not how it works? <laughs> um, that's got a John Byrne B cover, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you'll see a lot of John Byrne covers. Um, so that that's pretty nice. That's a pretty nice classic Batman with the big ears. Um. So, yeah, and if you want to, you never know, there might be some kind of reveal at the end of this one leading into 1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, 1,000 probably is just a celebration of Batman's history, so it's probably nothing like a Red Goblin happening uh, over here, but, y- you know, you never know. And we think quite a few people are ramping up their order numbers going into 1,000, so not like 999 to be under-ordered, we don't think. Yeah, yeah. We've got some uh, free comic book day, uh, last chances on uh, Justice League special and a Catwoman special from DC, which uh, were they on the order form last month? Are these are these ads, late ads, or they were on there? I think they were on there. I'm not sure okay. completely though. Mm, I don't remember. What? But yeah, I, go ahead. But if yeah, so if you if another one of the of the myriad of reasons that we give you to get on this FOC ma- mailing list is you don't feel like heading out on free comic book day or they're out of stuff. You know, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to get everything on FOC uh, from free comic book day. You can order it through Eric, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Very cool. What an interesting take Martian Manhunter number three, the cover B we got a Joshua Middleton uh, and it is Pretty interesting. The Flash B is nice. Uh, that's Michael Golden. Um, so not a big track record with that guy, but I think that's that's pretty nice. Ryan Sook doing another uh, homage B cover. Not as cool as the... Uh, the pick last week mm-hmm. or the week before that was um, Death of uh, Jason Todd. This is Loss of Barry Allen from a file folder, which is nice, but not, not as nice. Not as iconic in my mind, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Naomi going to a second print of the Bendis. Yeah, I, I noticed that. that not only is... Uh, Young Justice going to second print, but also Naomi. And uh, unlike Marvel, we don't see second printings from DC as often, mm-hmm. um, and we don't have an image for it. So if they were just slapping a collar tile, it's possible you know they they would just show that, wouldn't they? Um, that seems to be DC's mo. you usually with the second print, so. I'm not hanging my hat on it being anything well, yeah. different. What well, wasn't it New Fifty Two second prints that were like all with an orange? Yeah, just an orange variant or uh, yeah, font like an orange collar essentially. Yeah, yeah. So pretty lame. Uh, if you did, you already mention that Michael Cho Shazam. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah the, the 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 Eagle Sham is the A cover and it's really nice, of course. Um, but the Michael Cho is the B cover. It, <laughs> it, it's kind of a cool stylized thing, um, yeah. which is which is cool as well. And of course, Wonder Woman sixty five, Stanley Art Germ Lau on the B cover for Wonder Woman. Man, that's good. Is it? Yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, uh, are these heating up? 
I haven't even checked the market on those. I've just been holding on to all mine too. So I, I, it's, it definitely could get legs. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. That's but pretty that's much it for me on DC. Oh, and then there's also the Young Justice uh, second yeah. printing I, I mentioned, but it also doesn't have a cover. So, but we we are assuming that they're not going to do a new cover. Yeah, like they haven't in the past, so that would be a departure for them. Mm-hmm. But if you want to take a flyer, it's possible that that would be kind of a lower print run of those uh, with a different cover. Would might be a, an opportunity. Absolutely. All right, let's see what we have in IDW. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, A Darkened Wish. <coughs> and they're doing character sheet variants as well. We don't get a cover for that to mm-hmm. see. Um, but they must have seen the Spike and Rick and Morty character sheets and said, let's milk this puppy. Yeah, I like the idea on them too. Now, uh, we also have Punk's Not Dead rebooting, uh, revoluming for London Calling with another number one. That is, of course, an existing property and not a new number one. Um, it's a fun title, though. I enjoy it a lot. Let's see. Do anything with the cover B. I was hoping for an homage to the Clash album cover, but I'm not getting it here, so that's a skip nah. for me. Yeah, that's it for me, from IDW. All right, we're on to Image. Well, we mentioned Die, 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 um, so I'll be placing my order for those and keep that run intact. Um, We have Deadly Class 37, and on that note, Drew, you uh, finally listened to me and watched the series. I've watched the first two episodes, and I still have the third one on the DVR sitting there, um, and I really, really liked it. Uh, yeah. I thought it was really stylized and well done, well acted, and uh, really uh, top notch. Yeah, so but I, I like the uh, the eighties time frame on it too. Just really, yeah, yeah, very, very well done. Yeah, m- music score is pretty awesome too. Hit, hitting all my nostalgia buttons. There you go. Of course, we have Oliver number two, Gary Witta, uh, Derek Robertson writing that for image yeah that was um good it was a good first issue i I enjoyed it um so it was cool that you put that on my radar i wasn't thinking about it i liked it though and i think we only had one cover a for number one yeah and then well number two we get three covers now so uh what's that about i'm not real sure what that's about where we don't necessarily get with the first one but seems to be something pretty cool with the uh the uh rachel scott cover c so (coughs) <coughs> I may look into that. Phoning in the uh, Man Eaters cover B. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. let me see. And if you look at the A, it's pretty much the same cover with a different color palette. So, uh, oh, wow! Come on, don't even bother with the B cover if you're not going to do <laughs> any, any better than that. But true, the B's yellow. Yeah, but yeah, going to be well sought after. Yeah. Ooh, what do these spawn Matinas look like? Yeah, and I guess the last spawn, Jeez. 293, had like a printing error or something in it. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, so there's some there's some heat on that one. Um, I have to look into it. I, I'm sure it's sitting on racks because it just came out, so... Um, I'll, I'll monitor that on eBay and see if it's worth making a trek. But man, those are freaking amazing looking covers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like I like Matina. I don't care oh, if yeah. he does. I don't care if he does steal other people's stuff. That looks that looks original to me. <laughs> oh, Drew, Rose what? number seventeen, cover D, by Schultz. Yep. Uh, Jeff Schultz. Oh, it's a Calvin and Hobbes homage. And the series finale of Rose. Wow, that's cool. <coughs> When's the last time we saw a Calvin and Hobbes homage in comics? Mm. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, 
What do you think? You think it'll be any? I don't think Rose is really driving much. But <laughs> uh, no, no. That's you know, I think it's something cool. super original and cool and unique that I yeah I think will be fun to have. That is fun. All right, Drew. Let's see what Marvel has in store for us. And you're going to tell me all about Age of X Men Extremists number I wasn't, one. I wasn't. I wasn't even going to click on it. <laughs> the last Age of X Men was so boring. I just. I. I just couldn't even get through it so um go ahead take take that away if you're well leah williams is writing it i'm not all oh, the great leah williams there you go a perfect world doesn't just happen it needs to be cultivated that's where the extremists come in psylocke iceman north star blob jubilee and moneta protect people from threats they won't even know existed including the most insidious threat of all Love. Oh. I hate everything about that. <laughs> mm. I got a Mateo Scalera B cover for Daredevil. Uh, this is the Chip Zdarsky, Marco Cicchetto Daredevil relaunch, the second issue. Um, it's nice. Not as good as his low work, but it's nice. How do you say the last name on Captain America, Braver and Mightier, number one, cover A, the cover artist? Uh, Shitty. Valerio Shitty. Okay, just check. Or, sh- or Shitty. One of those. And uh, cover B, a really cool Ron Lim version of uh, Captain Marvel. And there's a, another Sienkiewicz. Uh, Fantastic Four cover doesn't hook me quite as much as the Black Hammer. I think I can pass on that one. Daredevil 2, uh, we have Mateo Scalera doing cover B and uh, that looked uh, fat Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of Captain Marvel variants this week for uh, FOC. It's a lot of the 227 books are going to have some Captain Marvel variants. A lot of true believers doing Captain Marvel as well. So Yeah, because when's this stuff come out? 227. Okay, and then uh, the actual Captain Marvel movie is March 8th. Yeah, so I guess that's the timing. So Makes sense. Dropping stuff a little bit beforehand. Um, I know you've been looking forward to the Ziggy Pig Silly Seal comic number one from uh, Frank Thierry, the great Frank Thierry, with a okay. cover, by, cover by Nick Klein there. Um, what is this? It is... Uh, they were the superstars of the funny animal comedy circuit. Uh, money and fame have now ruined their friendship. Uh, I don't know what this is. <coughs> yeah, I'm unaware of this. Yeah, I don't or know what this is. Or the target audience, or... Yes. Is this an old property they're, they're resurrecting? I was going to say, is this one of those 80 years ago things? Maybe they didn't mention that, though. Very interesting uh, Young Guns variant for the uh, cover B on it. I like that. Fantastic Four and Connect Four. Hmm. Has nothing to do with Ziggy Pig, but it's a very, very cool Young Guns cover. Which means, they'll be, will there be a Young Guns exclusive version of that cover? For just retailers? Yeah. Maybe. They do that, don't they? Mm-hmm. That is a unique and interesting enough cover that that might be worth looking into. Because I, li- I really like that Fantastic Four, Connect Four cover. You're a, that's a Mike Del Mundo? Uh-huh. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, that's very nice. Yeah. Is it enough to get just that? Or do you look, you would want the the rarer one? Obviously you'd look into the rarer one because it's 
of course going to have much better value um but even without that that might just be a good one to have yeah that's kind of nice very very unique take and i don't see ziggy pig sealy seal comics uh, having a big print run so yeah um could this be under ten thousand copies probably (laughs) yeah Anything else in Marvel, sir? No. All right, let's see what we have from Boom Studios. Well, I still haven't read Avant Garde's number one, um, but I did like uh, the premise of that, so the second issue is FOC here. Uh, there's also a free comic book day Whedonverse book, as well as a Lumberjanes. The Whedonverse might appeal to some people. Mm-hmm. I think I've read the first issue or two of Smooth Criminals from Boom and enjoyed that a lot. Uh, its fourth issue is Last Chance to Get That Is Here. It's a good book. That's pretty much it from Boom for me. Yeah. Let's see what Dynamite has for us. Yeah. Oh my uh, goodness, Hack and Slash. We're going up to 40 copy incentive variants with these Dynamite books. One in forty variants. Mm. Yeah, Kiss doing the same thing. So yeah. it's Peter Peter Cannon. There is an independently. Oh, that Zadarsky is a cover A. Mm, okay, I'll take a look at that one. Nice. Good old Chip. I didn't realize uh, Karen Gillan was writing that. Did I? Maybe we maybe we had talked about that. Before. I, we touched on it for a little bit, but yeah. That's it from me from Dynamite. All right. Let's see through some of our smaller things from our Action Labs down through. Sweetie number one is a Sean Dillon writer artist creation. Uh, uh, well, it looks a little young for me. Black Mask with Nobody is in Control, number one. One of four. Patrick Kindlin and Paul Tucker. Yeah, I think Patrick Kindlin was the guy that wrote uh, We Can Never Go Home with uh, Rosenberg, Matt Rosenberg. Or maybe, yeah, it was before... Was that before Four Kids Walk in a Bank? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rosenberg blew up, and Kinlan's still back at Black Mask, but at least he's still writing comics. There you go. Snap Flash Hustle, third issue. It turns out it's a four-issue miniseries. I don't know if it always was. Um, first issue was great. I haven't read the second issue yet, but um, I really like the first issue. Uh, it's a, some free comic book day stuff down here. We've got uh, Riverdale, the Defend Comics, uh, Ghost Tog number one, a Sheets story number one, Ghost, I said Ghost Tog, uh, Starburns Presents, and that's the, who's that again? God, I can't, I, t- I ask you this every time and I can't remember. Starburns, that is the, uh, creative team behind Rick and Morty what's his oh, face his yeah. name is now escaping me yeah so lots of um, free comic book day stuff that if you miss the boat um, and you want to guarantee you get a copy of it uh, you can for a very very small pittance 30 cents or so 25 cents Drew for the past couple of years I've challenged myself to read more valiant books here we have The Forgotten Queen, number one, by Teeny Howard, with art by Amalcar Pina. So we have something that's kind of right up my alley. we got a like, oh. feudal Japan type stuff, it looks like. Very Long nice. Ago, the mighty generals of the Mongol Empire rode from Siberia to uh, Carpathia and conquered all who stood in their way. Legends tell of a witch who walked with them, who would infect the hearts of all warriors in her midst with an unquenchable thirst for battle and bloodshed a warmonger and now she is walking again 
So that sounds very interesting. I, I really like the Veronica Fish cover C. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a really good cover. If I was going to get one, I'd probably get that one. Yeah, very intriguing. I like the cover A. Well, of course. <laughs> I would expect nothing less from you. There you go, absolutely. And here we have just a, a litany of different... Looks like free comic book day stuff. Yeah, I'm guessing this is your last chance to get those. And um, a really... one Punchline number one... Uh, from Antarctic Press, because uh, they don't, I don't think they participate in Final Order Cutoff usually with their titles. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not usually on the FOC, but this uh, punchline number one is. It is, of course, very hot. Its number one issue is very hot, like not as not as hot as rags, but still very hot. Um, and for thirty four cents. Uh, you can get a, a, a copy or two or three of Punchline Number One as a free comic book day, and there might be some heat there. Yeah, not a whole lot of invested on that one. Just to maybe get something there. Yeah, and don't forget Interceptor. Um, that is a free comic book day offering. That's a Donny Cates book from Vault. So Donny Cates, who is you know like one of the hottest writers out there, um, he's doing a vault book. Uh, your first look at it is going to be for Free Comic Book Day, so uh, that has a chance to be a very hot book as well. And for thirty one cents, you know, get ten, take a shot. You can take yeah. a shot. You know, uh, for the price of a regular comic book, you can get you can have ten of those stacked up, and. Um, ready to go just in case it gets optioned quickly and uh, is the next uh, god country that heats up there you go of course this has just been drew and i going through the foc of course it's been one of the things we've liked to uh, to look at going into each and every week just kind of a final opportunity to either pump up our pull lists and orders or uh, get a final look at some art and some different things coming out within the next uh you know four to six weeks usually so Drew and I like to go through that, and of course, Eric at Cowabunga, really good at uh, curating a list for us on the FOC lists. Of course, go to your local comic book shop, and by Monday, if you want to add anything or change anything, and if your local comic shop doesn't do anything with FOC, feel free to reach out to Cowabunga, because yeah. Eric is good about making sure Drew and I don't miss books that we missed on our previews. Even, even when we forget to order them, he's, he... Even though he's got hundreds of customers, he remembers that uh, that we that we ordered that or we wanted that and send us a reminder. Are you sure you didn't want to get that? And uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We're just both really dumb. So <laughs> and FOC, of course, responsible for Drew's orders being inflated by thirty to forty percent the last year. <laughs> it does help. It does help a lot uh, in that regard. So uh, yeah, that was a good list and massive list. Lots of stuff in it. Um, if you're ever going to take a look at the FOC, this would be the week to do it because there was tons of stuff. So very cool. Um, we got some feedback. Uh, we're mixing it up a little bit, sending feedback down the road. So break up some of these uh, lists of, of comics for you guys and see if that uh, kind of helps the show flow a little better. You know, we're only 494 episodes in, so we're still <laughs> trying to figure this thing out. Exactly. Drew, I'd like to have this thing perfected by 500 if we could. <laughs> oh my god that's a lot of pressure yeah no doubt <laughs> ryan says he loved the best of 2018 episode um and he wants to know our current must read comics from dc marvel image in the back half for 2019 so uh what are we reading from those four three publishers in a, a litany of back half uh for 2019 let's see dc for me uh, until Scooby Apocalypse hits 36, uh, that would be my must read. Uh, Marvel would probably be, ooh, amazing Spider Man. There you go. Uh, image is Die Die Die. Uh, it's probably my my favorite image right now. And uh, back half, boy, there's so many. Um, you know. Uh, could be one of those black mask books like uh you know there's a book called uh 
uh, Patience, Revenge. Well, I'm butchering the name, um, <laughs> but I think yeah, I think it's Black Mask. Um, it, it's been fantastic. I, I've read five of those. I don't know how many more it has left, but it, it's been really great. Um, and uh, it, th- those would kind of be the ones that are top of mind for 2019 reads. Uh, really. For DC, um, right now we're uh, into uh, the Batman Who Laughs, the six issue mini series. It's one issue oh. two. And yeah. that's mostly because uh, uh, several of us at work are reading that comic, so it's a good thing to chit chat about. So I've been into that. Oh, a water cooler book. Yeah, a little water cooler book. So that's why it's my my newest little obsession there. Um, within Marvel, I'm a little behind on everything, but you've got me uh, interested in the uh, Winter Soldier book there. Oh yeah, yeah, good. So one. I've got those stacked up, and um, that's my thing I'm delving into right now. Of course, image. I'm just going to default to Walking Dead because that's what I do. And then a shout out to Boom Studios Black Badge series. Oh, very good, very good choice. Nice. <coughs> um, Wolf Warner says first appearances this week. We got Plant Panther Pool. In... Oh, seriously? <laughs> I should have seen that coming. How did I not see that coming? In Deadpool versus Black Panther, which is surprisingly good. All right, Wolf. Uh, yeah, in per- the FOC, we just looked at Deadpool Black Panther number five coming out. That's the end of that five issue series. Okay. Panther Pool. We, we should have seen that coming, right? Yeah, we should have. I'm disappointed in myself. I need to Google <laughs> that character right now. Uh, Perpetua, who was in the Justice League a- annual. Uh, Funiculus, whose first appearance is in this Doctor Strange 400. And number 10, I did not realize Doctor Strange number 10 was actually the 400th issue. Of Legacy. I Man, didn't either. I, Is that the one with the... Uh, shoot. It must have been last the week. The Galactus cover? Or is that a different one? I can't remember. Oy vey. I'm oh, wh- this. I walk. I glossed right over its Legacy number as 400. Uh, Daughters of Liberty is in cap number 7. Uh, the Dreadful's first appearance in Terrifics. Joystick's first appearance in the Teen Titans annual. Mm. And, of course, the Spawn... 293 error uh so error page so uh, i gotta check into that find out what that's all about that's pretty interesting that's some good stuff to put on your uh radars for going to the racks and and picking that stuff up for especially if you're chasing first appearances you never know um i'm looking at at panther pool right now and all right let's 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 uh, oh okay we'll see you're into it, huh? Uh, it's it's interesting. Can't believe <laughs> I didn't predict this. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we should know in the solicit whoever he's with is going to be an amalgam character, yeah. right? Going to make sure that's on the radar from now on. Um, TK asks, can you pick the best three writers in comics today? Hmm. Mine are probably Donny Cates, Robert Kirkman... And since BKV's taking a nap, I need to put somebody else in there. You've read half a dozen Bendis books over the last year. You know, it is Bendis. Uh, you're right. That's a good one because he came on, he came on strong at DC, and I'm really, really loving everything he's doing. So, yeah, that's a good that's a good three for me. Tom Taylor can do no wrong for me. That's just oh. kind of how life is. Great choice. Um, <coughs> uh, Kirkman, because I continue to be. The yep. world's number one Walking Dead apologist, even though there's yep. numbers of those are dwindling by the second. And uh, Tom King's lost his glow for me, so that's a little bit off the the cusp there. So I'm only going to give you two. <laughs> okay, okay. So there's only two right, two good writers in comics today. Yeah, right now. Um, good list though. Um, so we thank you for that uh, feedback. You can go to our our website, comicsfunprofit.com, to find links to all our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, and um, Instagram, where you can comment on our show or send us uh, questions uh, or feedback on the episodes. We love to hear that. You can send us an email, comicsforfunandprofit at gmail.com, to reach us that way. Um, and you can always you can still do a, an iTunes review 
uh, because the 12 year old boy and Kyle really wants to get that 69th uh, <laughs> review on there. So, and I do have a third uh, writer. I, I've been impressed with Scotty Young as a writer from things like Middle West and Bully Wars. Um, so, Scotty Young, good call, good call. Uh, Comicron has crunched the numbers for 2018, and so uh, do you want to take a a guess as to how f- many comics sold over in 2018 a hundred thousand uh, units? Oh, uh, let's see, an average of three per month. So we'll say thirty six. Fifty five. Oh wow! Sold over a hundred thousand comics into comic shops. Uh, uh, number one, can you guess what that is? Uh, well, shoot, we had two big ones. We had Spider-Man and Action, right? Yep, yep, those one and two. So Action Comics 1000 did over half a million. Uh, and Amazing Spider-Man 800 did 439,000. Jeez. Followed by Batman 50, the wedding issue that wasn't, at 412,000. Uh, they did 412,000. Man, yeah. they're going to jump back to that well. I can almost see it now. That's, I mean, a little bit of hype. Uh, and, elite, uh, you know, some tie-in. Don't, don't forget all those tie-in issues, and too. And a few extra covers. And, oh, jeez. Man, they made bank on that. Mm-hmm. Um, Fantastic Four's first issue did 381,000. Yeah, that's right. I was shocked. I'm still shocked that did that many. Yeah, these are all like six and five, six, seven dollar books, eight dollar books. What is Fantastic books. Four down to now? Fantastic Four is down to like 36,000 or something like that. Is it already? Yeah. So less than 10% of what it started. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, Amazing Spider Man's first issue relaunch did almost 300,000. The Return of Wolverine number one did almost uh, two hundred seventy thousand. Venom's debut did almost two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man seven ninety eight, which was the first Red Goblin, did two hundred forty two thousand. Seven ninety nine, uh, leading up to eight hundred, did two hundred six thousand. With Batman Who Laughs wedged in there as the ninth best selling comic of the year yeah, right. at two hundred twenty six thousand. The only other uh, Justice League number one, it, its launch uh, came in at eleventh place, and it also did two hundred thousand and three two hundred and three thousand copies. Um, so it's the only other one that was over two hundred thousand. So um, seemed like a pretty healthy year. Marvel won handily, uh, taking forty percent um, uh, of of sales of comics. DC did thirty three percent. Image did almost 10. Um, so about where they always are. Uh, the top-selling non-Marvel or DC book was Magic Order, um, the Mark Millar book, at 158000 Oh, uh, yeah. But that ha- that's some h- hankiness there, I think. That was like they, they counted con sales oh that's right there was a there was a cross by that one or whatnot yeah but now that cross is gone so we don't know what if if those are actual sales or not i don't know um and we've got some doomsday clocks uh that it's sporadic issues that came out uh they all sold over one hundred fifty thousand when they came out so that's pretty solid um turns after after Magic Order, you got to go down for that Walking Dead number one fifteenth anniversary bag um, at one hundred and six thousand. Yeah, and we were confused on the numbers on that one. I'm still confused as to whether that's just one of those issues or all of the black bags. So I don't well, they, they said that month they said it was just the first issue. Yeah, just the first. But issue. you and I both doubt that, right? Yeah, I can't wrap my head around that. But the, I've been known to be wrong before. Yeah. Um, Oblivion Song launched this year, um, back in March, and its first issue did eighty-seven thousand. And so, was it Oblivion Song that they based the "Die Die Die" numbers on? Yes, exactly right, exactly right. So that gives us an idea that that there are eighty-seven thousand copies of "Die Die Die" number one mm-hmm. with ha- and, a dozen unique 
the bubble variants on issue it, one. Yeah, in, in, in shops, which is a lot higher than we'd want. Yeah. But 2018 will be the year of the bat dong, and none of these numbers <laughs> will say otherwise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there's die 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 right now, and it, it has eighty two thousand that listed as its as its shipping number. Um, so, so yeah, some interesting numbers. Uh, you can go to comicron dot com uh, and check out the twenty eighteen numbers to see uh, everything that's on there. Um, if you're interested in in that sort of thing, I I thought that was kind of kind of fascinating. Some of those numbers. Yep, and the uh, the uh, the forefront for twenty nineteen's most large sale book of the year of course we have detective 1000 yeah. coming up of course yes that should that should do half a million copies if action did half a million i would think detective will also do that much yeah no doubt and i think those covers those covers are pretty nice um so they're they're pulling out the stops although the action covers were really nice too uh, i think they're doing a really nice job on those those detective covers i still haven't figured out which ones i'm getting so i'm waiting to foc on those very cool. And I think, unless you had something else about that big list, then we can go to our sneak peek. Yeah, let's head on over to previewsworld.com. Find February the 6th, 2019, not January, February 6th, 2019. Click that table view and start where we love to start. Let's start in image. Well, I really like the uh, Stepan Sejic Sej, uh, uh, B cover for Unnatural. Uh, I, I like his style. I think that's pretty uh, a pretty good cover. Yeah. But but the A cover is nice as well. So the Mirko uh, and Dolfo, uh, she does a good. Uh, she draws a good pig girl. Very cool. Of course, the big thing: Vindication number one of four. M D Marie, um, Carlos Miko and Dima Junior on art with a Jonathan Davis cover. The premiere of this miniseries, in turbulent times when cops are often portrayed as the enemy of the people, Detective Chip Christopher maneuvers the blurred blue line between racism and due diligence in order to do his job. And right now, it's his job to investigate, turn to investigate, turn a young black man with a sketchy past who was previously exonerated of a similar murder. So maybe like an, an American Courage vein type book. <coughs> cool. So um, I think that looks pretty good. Only one cover. And not a, a lot cool to think cover, about. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll give you the, the full Walking Dead treatment here. We'll read the, the extensive solicit. It is, uh, it's time to learn once and for all. Is Princess a, fin, a friend or a foe? Well, done, I, done. Thought, I thought she was a friend. Uh, so unless I missed something, uh, where do her allegiances lie? Yeah, this feels like. Does this feel like it's been delayed? Is this a little late? No, it's it's right where it should be. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Feels like it's been a while since 187. Let's see what we have here in Dark Horse, sir. Uh, Girl in the Bay is J M De Mateus doing the writing uh it's a burger book so karen burger's curating the this line mm -hmm. uh corin howell doing the art uh on the inside and the cover which i think is nice clean art style i like it a lot um this uh this is the one where she uh, uh loses 17... track of time or comes over 50. yeah 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 i remember this yeah the 17 year old girl when she she resurfaces. It turns out that that fifty years has passed for everybody else, and there's been a doppelganger for her living out there her life. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think this is a pretty interesting concept. Mm -hmm. uh, De Mateus um, usually has a kind of a lighthearted writing style, so this will be interesting to see how he takes this. And uh, I'm interested in this book a lot. I, I, I think this will be a good one. Yep, and that's all I have in Dark Horse. Okay. Let's head on down to IDW, where I'm not doing G.I. Joe Sierra Muerte number one, so I don't think I have anything in IDW, for me at least this week. No. And I'm down to DC. 
Oh, this was uh, our this... sideways cover. For Batman? Yeah. This is the price. Is this this is that four issue series uh four issue crossover with the Flash, is that mm-hmm. right? Yep. And traditionally sideways covers don't necessarily do a ton, but uh, still very cool. Uh, the B cover for this female furies is uh, Matina. <laughs> Completely read that wrong, and I read female furries. So yeah. whoops, whoops. It's a different. That's a different comic entirely. Yeah. Uh, Cecil Castellucci doing the writing, but that Matina cover is kind of really, really, really nice. Is that Barda? Mm-hmm. That's really nice. Here we have the uh, Derek Chu Harley Quinn fifty eight that I was obsessed with for a while, and the more yes. I got it, the more I want it. It's also a landscape cover, but I really dig the Japanese style. Yeah, so and, and I don't think you end up pulling the trigger on it. Nope, I wimped out. Regrets. I have. A we few. have them. We have them. Uh, Marv Wolfman's doing a Man and Superman 100-page Super Spectacular. Uh, it's a $10 book. Kyle is sitting this one out for sure. <laughs> that's a dollar per, it's a 10 cents per page. What do we got there? What's the, what's the breakdown? That's about right. <laughs> that's about the going rate. Uh, let's see. We got uh, second issue of Young Justice. With a, a really nice Sanford Green B cover, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Teen Lantern, oh yeah, yeah. Her first appearance would have been in issue one. Yeah. Of course, Jenny so, Hex, I'm rooting for. Yeah, she had a good debut in issue one. Um, not sure if I'm in that book for the long haul, but I'll read another one. Of course, our boy Bendis finishing up United States versus Murder Incorporated number six, the final issue there. Yeah, yeah. It's probably time. <laughs> so long, and thanks for the six issues. Yeah. Let's see what Marvel has for us. That's another Age of X-Men. Second issue of Champions. Uh, that was that was interesting, that relaunch. They end up... Uh, making three teams basically like three travel teams doing simultaneous missions in the first issue and it was I hope that's not the way it's going to go all the time it was it was definitely a choice they made and we do have that Chip Zdarsky debut yep. classified Arda- being the only thing they will tell us about this I'm hoping it's uh, great but you're in your own, and you're going. You're you're in for their. Are you committing to anything other than number one? Oh yeah, oh, Zdarsky. I'll give him a full arc. Good, good. And before I, make <coughs> um, I've been reading a lot of these Marvel 80th anniversary genre celebrations. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, the War is Hell was a war genre, uh, comic had a couple of stories in it. Was great. Loved it. Uh, there was um, a horror one that came out last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had a couple of horror stories that all tied together and had a nice little framing device in there. And I really liked that. I st- think I skipped the the romance one. You uh, would. I would. You know, I've no, I'm not a romantic. Um, but <laughs> but th- these have been really cool. Uh, the genre ones. Uh, I, I liked them. So I'm going to check out this Western Gunhawks and uh, and see what they do uh, hmm. because uh, I, I've liked some of the other things. And this is one of the ones that intrigued me the most of those titles. Oh, oh yeah. You Did you like Jonah Hex when it was out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From DC? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I remember the last time I read a Marvel Western. Yeah. So so this should be this should be good. Mortal Hulk 11 going to a second print as 13 comes out. Yeah, it's, um, there was a first appearance in issue 12 and, uh, I read it and for the life of me, 
I don't really get the first appearance, what the big deal is, but maybe it'll uh, get fleshed out a little bit more in this in 13. <coughs> Star Wars Age of Republic, we get Anakin St Skywalker's book number one by Jody Hauser. Love Ry Rob Liefeld's uh, Wolverine on uh, Uncanny X-Men 11. Cover, what, B, D? That is cool. Very nice. X-23. Hopefully they'll leave this title alone for a while and... Let it play out instead of constantly revamping it, rebooting it. All good stuff. Yeah. All right, that's it for me and Marvel. Let's see what Dynamite has. And of well, course, we got another Red, Red Sonia. This one is this was Mark Russell doing the writing. Okay. Um, Amanda cover. Amanda Connor doing a cover. Um, one of the better Amanda Connors. From yeah, my mind. this one, this one, I it is intriguing. But there uh, is Mark... a Frank Cho cover D. Yes, and I think I have that one. I think I might have pulled the trigger on that one, sight unseen. Um, Mark Mark Russell, you know, he does the the social satire, right? So mm -hmm. how's how's that going to work with a Red Sonya book and? <laughs> For Red Sonia Puris, is that uh, something that you really want? Or is he going to be just straight up telling Red Sonia tales? Maybe he's a super fan. Mark, that, that Frank Cho is great, Yeah. by the way. Yeah, so uh, this this one could go a variety of ways, but I am uh, really excited about it. But definitely going to dip your toe in and see what he has for Oh, us. yeah. Yes. All right, let's head him down to Boom. And then down to our smaller publishers. <laughs> we didn't even you didn't even pause. No, you, but just uh, just you could tell. So you long. could tell there there's nothing there. You keep on moving. God mode number one from Keen Spot Entertainment. Ooh. Mike Rosenwin Rosenweig and Jason Swoboda. Great covers. Um, three great choices. Travel back in time to 1995 when Netscape was how you navigated the internet. Yeah, it looks really good in 90s. I very much uh, see myself as a kindred spirit with Cover B with the hair parted in the middle and the PlayStation 1 controllers sitting there. So, Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this could be something fun. Yeah, it could be a good time. It is five bucks though. Ah, oh, yeah, lost me. What'd they do that for? <sighs> Lady Death is back. Did you miss her? No. Don't get the appeal. <laughs> Magical beatdown from Silver Sprocket. There's uh, a Jen Woodall writer artist doing this. Uh, Hyper violent street harassment revenge fantasy in the style of Sailor Moon about an average schoolgirl who transforms into a foul mouth and rage fuel magical girl. Watch in awe as she swiftly disposes of street harassers and uses her array of magical weapons. Printed in fluorescent pink and blue. Uh, this, everything sounds good about this except. $6. Six bucks. Now, oh, maybe there's a lot of pages in there. It says it's volume one. So it's like manga length. Uh, you mm, know, maybe it's worth Then maybe it's worth it if it's like trade length, manga length. Yeah. Uh, Silver Sprocket, I'm not familiar with them. So uh, that's, that's, I'm kind of interested in that. I don't know. Yeah. I remember when we touched during our FOC on Obra number one from Aftershock. Um, of course, written by Ryan Perot and Milos Slakovic on art. Um, betrayed by his people when exalted to Earth, Lord Oberon, the former, former king of the fairies, seeks out an 
innocent prophesied child in order to manipulate her into becoming his ultimate weapon so that he can reclaim his rightful throne. Seems interesting. I do like my Aftershock books, and this one seemed kind of rad. Yeah. <coughs> That's about it for me. Yep, myself as well. So, Drew, this is the point of the podcast where I ask you what your pick of the week is. What is your book that you're going to make sure you are darkening the doorstep of your FOC this week and make sure that you pick up? What do you got for me, brother? Uh, I'm going to go with God Mode from Keen Spot. Uh, it's, it's a small publisher. It's going to be a tiny print run. Yes. Uh, it, has, it, it has a really nice art style that I enjoy, at least on the cover. And uh, it has a chance to be uh, maybe a rags type heat, maybe. Who knows? I am jumping back and forth between that cover B Harley and Oberon number one. That's my struggle right here. And I'm going to go ahead and say take a flyer on Oberon number one from Aftershock. Okay, it's good. Of course, if you guys disagree with what we picked for our pick of the week this week, this first week of February 2019, feel free to drop us a line. Uh, find us all of these things at comicsfunprofit.com. <coughs> um, feel free to be and part of the podcast. If you agree, let us know that you agree with what we picked. Or if we missed something and didn't really talk about it, uh, feel free to tell us that as well. And we will be either late next week or not publishing next week because... I am going to be on vacation, so not Kyle. Hey. You heard it right. I actually get to go somewhere, and uh, we may not be able to squeeze an episode in next week. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, so uh, we'll let you know closer to when it normally drops, whether we're going to be able to pull something off or not. So just a scheduling heads up on all of that. But we did yeah. get you for this first week. We did get you for February the 6th. So, Drew and I would like to thank you for coming along with us. And again, feel free to drop a line and be part of the podcast. So, for Drew, so for myself, see ya.